In this video, you're gonna learn why chest up and shoulders back is the absolute worst cue that you can use to improve your posture. We'll talk about why this is the worst cue. We'll discuss the problem that this is trying to solve and why the definition of the problem is incorrect. Then we'll give you the correct definition of the problem and the solution to go with it. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right in. So before we get into the nuts and bolts about what exactly is going on here with why people are trying to use this chest up and shoulders back cue and why it doesn't work, I just wanna say that if you've been using this cue, I totally get it. So I was there, I not only gave this cue probably hundreds of times to clients when I was working as a personal trainer, but I also used this cue habitually and tried to use this cue all the time, whether that was going about my day or weightlifting. So I know firsthand that this doesn't work. I now understand why it doesn't work. And that's why I'm gonna be able to share this solution with you today. That's not only gonna help you to stop using this ineffective cue, but also to use a solution that will actually get you the results you want. So chest up and shoulders back. What is this trying to accomplish in the first place? So if someone's giving you this cue, you probably have some sort of slouched or slumped posture and rounded shoulder posture and maybe even forward head posture, but definitely those first two. And so the rationale here is that if we have this compressed sternum kind of position that's characteristic of a slumped posture and we have the shoulders rounding around the rib cage, then the solution must be just to lift the rib cage to reduce that slouch, as well as to pull the shoulders back just to reduce that forward shoulder. And the idea here is that weak traps and tight pecs are the reason that we have the shoulders forward and that a weak back is the reason that we're slumped like this and not in a more upright position. However, this is a misunderstanding of the problem, which is the reason that this cue doesn't actually work. And it's also the reason that this cue often can make posture worse in the long term and can actually prevent you from being able to move and breathe the way you want. So now let's discuss what's actually going on here to cause these postures in the first place. So the most common postural deviation you're gonna see here is compression at the level of the lower rib cage that extends this lower rib cage forward in space relative to the rest of the rib cage. And so you're gonna see that forward movement in space ultimately tips back this rib cage. And when that happens, what we're gonna see is that at a certain point, we're gonna to start to get our center of gravity moving forward in space, such that the muscles here in the abdomen start to have to contract to hold us back. And so those center six pack abdominal muscles known as the rectus abdominis, they attach right here to the sternum. And so when they start to have to act as a braking mechanism, what they do is they start to pull that sternum down. And so we get this compression that happens from the back first and then the front second that ultimately starts to give us that depressed sternum and slouched slump kind of a posture. Now, as we're in this position even more, we'll see that this upper back starts to move backwards. And so what that does is it expands this upper back and it compresses this upper chest. So we had the lower rib cage moving forward, that sternum coming down, then the upper back moving back a little bit more to compress this upper sternum and expand this space between the shoulder blades. Now, as this happens, the shoulder blades just follow the contour of the rib cage and they move around. So this rounded shoulder posture that we're seeing here isn't actually the result of tight pecs or weak traps. It's actually the position and shape of the rib cage itself that's actually causing these muscles to behave differently. And if you're finding value in this video so far, go ahead, like the video, leave me a comment below or subscribe to the channel. All these things help the algorithm to help me help more people. So instead, if we wanna correct this position, we're not gonna move our chest up and reinforce that rib cage position that started this whole chain of events in the first place. And we're not gonna squeeze the shoulder blades back to just promote an additional compensation. But instead, we're gonna do the minimum amount of steps to get back into a more neutral position from the position we're in. So what we wanna do first is we wanna allow this sternum to come up. We can start to do that with breathing but in order to actually allow those muscles to relax, we're gonna to have to come back in space here a little bit, and we're gonna to try to relax this area here at the lower rib cage. And this is initially gonna make it feel like you're in a little bit more of a slouch or slump than you were to begin with. So if that's how it feels, don't worry, you're on the right track. We just have a few additional steps to go through. Now, once you're here, the sternum will still be down a little bit, but the potential to expand it will be there. So then to expand this, what we have to be able to do is be able to get expansion in the rib cage from front to back. Now, the way that we're gonna do that 
is to actually breathe in using our diaphragm, which pushes down to then fill air into the lungs and expand us front to back. Now, in many cases, you might have trouble with this because the diaphragm, if it tends to rest low in a contracted position, actually isn't in a good position to take air into that rib cage. So the way we're gonna start in this case is by doing a long, gentle exhale through an open, relaxed mouth. You wanna do this without creating a lot of tension in your abdominals, and instead keep your belly relaxed for as long as possible and follow that exhale till the very end. At the end of that, you'll feel some gentle activation in the deepest layer of your abdominals, but not a ton of activation here in the center. Once you're in this position, your diaphragm is gonna be more relaxed in an ascended position. And then from here, you can do a nice easy inhale through your nose, quiet and silent, imagining pulling air in at a very slow rate as the diaphragm pulls down and compresses against your guts and that slight tension that you created at the end of your exhale. If you can do this, with those abdominals opposing the activity of your diaphragm, you're gonna feel your chest expand and fill with air. And from there, you'll be able to get that sternum to then come up. When that sternum comes up, while we maintain relaxation in this lower aspect of the rib cage, what you're gonna see is that the shape of the rib cage changes such that these shoulders are able to just easily go back in a position without you having to actively squeeze them back and together. Now, I know we just said a lot, so if you had trouble following that, we're gonna do a nice, simple guided practice here. So from here, with the cranium, rib cage, and pelvis all stacked, soft knees, weight in the middle part of the foot, we're gonna relax the abdomen and do a nice, long, gentle exhale through an open, relaxed mouth. We're gonna go. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Keep the abdomen as relaxed as possible for as long as possible. And once you have all the air out, you're gonna feel the outer and deeper abs contract just a little bit. Now I want you to pause after you've exhaled. Try to relax your diaphragm as much as possible while maintaining a little bit of tension in your abs. And now breathe down, imagining your diaphragm going down against your guts while still having a little bit of tension. And then you're gonna feel your ribs expand a little bit here, including your sternum, which is gonna come forward and slightly out without you having to arch your rib cage up. You're then gonna repeat this sequence, doing a long exhale, trying to keep your abdomen as relaxed as you can for as long as you can. Then pausing, and now taking a breath in through your nose with slight tension in the abs, slowly relaxing those abs over the course of the entire inhale. Now inhale. Diaphragm pushes down, we can feel the chest start to expand as air comes into the lungs. So instead of having to move that rib cage in space and extend like this, we actually get the sternum moving up because of airflow in the lungs. Okay, so just to recap, the incorrect way to address slumped, slouched, and forward shoulder posture is to raise the chest up and to squeeze the shoulders back. The reason this doesn't work is because we're reinforcing the position that got us there in the first place and we're also not impacting the shape of the rib cage. Now the correct way to address these postural issues is to actually get back in space to allow some relaxation of that lower aspect of the rib cage, then to use good diaphragmatic breathing to expand the rib cage via airflow into the lungs, which is gonna help us get that sternum in front of our chest back up and expanded to allow those shoulders to settle into the right position without any additional muscular effort. Now you might be wondering, what if you went through this video and you felt like you weren't really able to do that guided practice very well. Well, if that's you, you're definitely not alone. And in many cases, we need to do one of two things, if not both. And those are first to work on breath work in isolation. A lot of times we've been breathing incorrectly for so long that we really don't even know what a diaphragmatic breath is, even with some of the cues that I provided. If that sounds like you, you're gonna to wanna to go to the link in the description and pick up the breath work breakthrough Right now, there's a discount code you can find in the description that will allow you to get it today for only $5. And the second thing that you're gonna to have to work on is being able to use these breathing strategies combined with positioning. This is what's gonna help you to improve movement, mobility, and get postural changes that actually stick. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, go ahead and click the link in the description, sign up for my brand new group movement coaching program. It's gonna be limited slots starting this summer. We're gonna be talking all about posture and breathing and how to use those to move and feel better. All right guys, so that does it for this video. As always, thanks for watching. Until next time, peace.